Good morning class. So today we're going to be going through the large intestine meridian. So the full name of this meridian is the large intestine meridian of the hand Yang Ming. And if you remember back to your introductory lecture slides, remember that they gave us a lot of information that we can use here in understanding where the meridian is just from its name. So if we look here, this meridian is a hand Yang meridian. So what that tells us is that firstly, it runs on the hand. And secondly, if it's a Yang meridian, where do you think that it flows on the arm? So the Yang meridians all flow on the lateral aspect of the arm. And this one in particular, because it is the Yang Ming meridian, means it's the most anterior of the three Yang Ming meridians. And then there are 20 points in total, and the common indications between points are for conditions of the head, the face, the five sense organs, the large intestine, and regional diseases. And this refers to any diseases along the flow of the meridian. Now let's look at the course that this meridian flows. So this meridian originates on the radial aspect of the index finger near the nail over here, and then it runs superiorly along the radial aspect of the second metacarpal between the interosseous space of the first and second metacarpals. So he has the first metacarpal, he has the second metacarpal, and the interosseous space is between these two over here. It then continues ascending along the lateral and anterior aspect of the forearm, the upper arm, up to the shoulder. At the shoulder, what it does is it then travels along the back, this part over here, to D14, which is below C7. From here, it then moves interiorly and emerges again at the supraclavicular fossa over here. From here, it continues ascending up the neck, past the jaw, and at the lips, it enters the lower gums. That's this portion over here. The other branch continues wrapping around the upper lips. It crosses the midline over here and ends on the opposite side of the nose. So that means that the meridian that starts on the right arm ends on the left side of the nostril, whereas the meridian that starts on the left arm would end on the right side of the nostril. And this is an important aspect to note for this meridian, as this is the only meridian that does this. Next, we're going to look at the major branches of this meridian. So there are two branches. The first branch occurs at the supraclavicular fossa, and this branch branches off here from the supraclavicular fossa, descends along the torso, and connects with the corresponding Fu organ, the lung, and then continues descending to connect with the meridian's organ, the large intestine, all the way down here. The second branch is a minor branch that occurs at the lips over here, and we said that branch runs from just lateral to the lips down to enter the lower gums. So this slide once again shows the frequently used points. So remember, these are the points on this meridian that are more important than the others as they are used more often. And the large intestine meridian has six important points. Firstly, large intestine 1, Shangyang, large intestine 4, Hegu, large intestine 10, Shushanli, and large intestine 11, Qiqi, large intestine 15, Jianyu, and large intestine 20, Yingxiang. Now we're going to go into detail on the individual points. So the first point is Shangyang, large intestine 1. This point is a jingwell and metal point of the meridian, and it is located on the radial border of the index finger. So he has the index finger, and we're just on the radial border. Remember the radial border is where the radial bone is situated, which is here. This is the radius. So we're on this part of the body. And then it must be 0.1 sun from the corner of the nail. So he has the corner of the nail, and we're doing just 0.1 sun away from it. Put you in that region. This point can be used for toothache, sore throat, febrile diseases, and cobra. Our insertion is a perpendicular, shallow insertion, 0.1 sun, or we prick this point to cause bleeding with a three-edge needle. Next, we're looking at Erjian, 
large intestine 2. So this point is located on the radial border of the index finger. So we're still on this portion here where the radius runs. And then it's in the depression distal to the second metacarpal phalangeal joint. So what does this mean? Well, the metacarpal phalangeal joint is the joining point between the metacarpals, which are these bones here, from here to here. This bone here is the metacarpal. And the phalanges are this bone, this bone, and this bone, these three bones. So the metacarpal phalangeal joint is this joint here that joins the metacarpals with the phalanges. So now that we know it's this joint, we must go distal to the second metacarpal phalangeal joint. So here's the first joint, this is the second joint, and then we're going to go just distal to it, so that's in this direction. And then it's located in the depression that is distal to this, and that's located around here. This point can be used for toothache or epistaxis, as well as febrile diseases. And how we needle this point is we do an oblique proximal insertion, so that's in this direction, or a distal insertion in this direction, 0.2 to 0.3 sin. Or there's another option where we can do a perpendicular oblique insertion towards the palm. So that's towards this direction as well. And we can go 0.5 sin deep if we use that direction. The next point is Sanjan, large intestine 3. So this is a shoe stream and wood point of the meridian. And it is located on the radial border of the index finger. So if we look here, once again, we're in this region. And then this point is very similar to the previous one that we just did, Urjian, large intestine 2. The only thing that's different here is if you look here, this one is proximal instead of distal. So that means we're going to this same joint here, but this time we have to go in this direction. And then once again, we have to find a depression, which is located here. And then it also says that you can find this point when the hand is slightly flexed, as this makes the depression more palpable. This point is also the shoe stream and wood point of the meridian, and it can be used to treat toothache, sore throat, abdominal distension, borborygmus, and other diseases of the intestine. And thirdly, it can be used for somnolence. And how we insert in this point is we do a perpendicular insertion, 0,5 to 2 tsun, directed towards small intestine 3. So small intestine 3, we haven't yet done, but it's located around this region here on the image, so we're going to go towards it like this. And we will learn about small intestine 3's location in future lectures. The next point is Hergu, large intestine 4. This is the Hersi and Yuan source point of the meridian. So can anyone remember what are the function of Yuan source points? So these points are especially effective in treating disorders of their associated Zhang or Fu organ. So for instance, this point, which is large intestine 4, is especially effective in treating disorders of the large intestine organ. And this point is located on the dorsum of the hand. So that's this portion of the hand, or the back portion of the hand. And it's between the first metacarpal, this one, and the second metacarpal, this one here. And it's near the midpoint of the second metacarpal bone on its radial border. So here's the midpoint over here of this second metacarpal. And then we've got to go to the radial border, which is this portion here. And then the third thing you have to remember is it's got to be between this bone here and this bone. So that puts it around here. One thing I want you to note here is that this image can be a bit misleading as it makes the point look like it's very close to this bone here. And that's just because of the perspective. If you look at the angle from a slightly more posterior view of the hand, you'd realize that it's actually between these two bones. And then this point is also one of Madan Yang's heavenly star points. And if you remember from the Lung Meridian slides, this is the list of Mada Yang, that famous ancient Chinese doctor, who he listed his most important points. And large intestine four was one of them. And he said it was great for treating headache, swelling of the face, malaria with chills and fever, tooth decay, nosebleeds, and locked jaw. And then this is also a point from Gao Wu's command points. And this point was said to be very good to treat disorders of the face and mouth. Let's look at the indications for this point. So this point can be used for headache, 
redness and swelling and pain of the eyes, toothache, epistaxis, deviation of the eye and mouth, and deafness. It can also be used for exterior syndromes, such as chills and fevers, febrile diseases, without sweating, or with excessive sweating. It can also be used for amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, and dystocia. And our insertion is a perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 tun. And this point is contraindicated during pregnancy. The next point is Yangshi, large intestine 5. This is the Jing River and fire point on the meridian. And it's located on the radial side of the wrist, this portion here. And it's between the tendons of the extensor pollicis brevis and longus. And this is in what we call the anatomical snuff box. And as you can see on the image, this is the extensor pollicis longus, this tendon here. And then the tendon over here is the extensor pollicis brevis. And when you flex these two tendons, a depression forms in this region. And then this point is located in the center of this depression. This point can be used for wrist pain, headache, redness with swelling and pain of the eyes, or deafness. Our insertion is a perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Pian Li, large intestine 6. This is the Luau connecting point of the meridian. And can anyone remember the function of Luau connecting points? So these points can be used to treat conditions affecting both their meridian as well as their associated meridian. So in this point's case, it can treat the large intestine meridian disorders but also disorders of the lung meridian. The location of this point is 3 tsun superior to the transverse crease of the wrist, this crease over here, and it's on the line connecting large intestine 5, which was in the anatomical snuff box, and large intestine 11, which we'll go through just now. So you find these two points, and then you draw a line connecting them, and this point is 3 tsun of this distance. And if you remember back from our locating point lectures, the distance from the cubital crease to the transverse wrist crease is 12 tsun. So that makes this point one quarter of the distance from the cubital crease to the wrist crease. The indications for this point is it can be used for tinnitus, epistaxis, and because of its location, it can be used for aching pain in the hand and arm. It can also be used for abdominal distension and edema. And our insertion is a horizontal oblique insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Wen Liu, large intestine 7. So this is a she cleft point of the meridian. And it is located 5 sun superior to the transverse crease of the wrist. So once again, we've got to locate this transverse wrist crease. And this time we're going 5 sun proximal to it. And this point is also on the line connecting large intestine 5 with large intestine 11. And then the indications for this point. So this point can be used for acute borborygmus and abdominal pain. And if you remember from your theory slides, the she cleft points have the function of being able to treat acute disorders. So that's why this point can be used for these two conditions. It can also be used for furuncles, headache, swollen face, sore throat, and other facial problems. And finally, it can be used for aching pain of the upper back and shoulder. Our insertion is a horizontal oblique insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. And remember from our lung meridian slides, this means the angle of insertion is midway between a horizontal insertion and an oblique insertion. And then the next point is Xia Lian, large intestine 8. This point is also on the radial side of the forearm. And this time it's 4 sun inferior to the cubital crease. This is the cubital crease, so we've got to go 4 sun inferior, which is now in this direction. Or we could go 8 sun superior to the transverse wrist crease, as this would be in the same place. And then we once again have to be on that line connecting large intestine 5 with large intestine 11. And what I want you to note here is that there are actually many points located on this line. So this illustrates how important it is to know how to locate both large intestine 5 and large intestine 11 when we get to them. Because if you cannot locate either one of these points, then you can't locate any of the other points that use them to be located. For instance, if I asked you in the exam to locate large intestine 8, and you mislocated large intestine 5 as maybe more over here, 
your line is going to be completely wrong and your point will be here where it's supposed to be up here. And that's why points like large intestine 5 and large intestine 11, which are used to locate other points, are very important to know. And then the indications for this point, because of its location, it can be used for pain of the elbow and arm. And then it can also be used for headache, vertigo and eye pain, as well as borborygmus and abdominal pain. And then we insert the needle perpendicularly or in a bleak direction, 0.5 to 1.5 sin. The next point is Shang Lian, large intestine 9. This point is similar to the previous points. It's on the radial side of the forearm. This time, 3 tsun inferior to the cubital crease. On the line, collecting large intestine 5 with large intestine 11. So in other words, if you find large intestine 5 and large intestine 11, which is the same as finding the transverse wrist crease or the cubital crease, this point is one quarter of this distance. So if we divided it like this into four equal parts, it's going to line over here. This point, because of its location, can be used for pain of the elbow and arm, hemiplegia and numbness of the hand and arm, headaches, or borborygmus and abdominal pain. And then we insert the needle either in a perpendicular direction or an oblique direction. 0.5 to 1.5 tun. So the next point we're going to look at is Shu Shan Li, large intestine 10. So this point is located 2 tsun inferior to large intestine 11, Kuchi, which is over here. So we're going to go 2 tsun below this. And just like the previous points, it's on the line connecting large intestine 11 to large intestine 5. The indications for this point, so this point can be used for numbness and pain of the hand, motor impairment of the upper extremities, and other disorders of the arm. It can also be used for abdominal pain and diarrhea. And finally, it can be used for toothache or swollen cheeks. Our insertion is perpendicular 0.8 to 1.2 tsun. The next point is Q Chi, large intestine 11. So this point is a hersey and earth point of the meridian. This point is located near the elbow when it is flexed. So what this means is that the arm must be in a 90 degree angle or it could be flexed slightly more, but it shouldn't be located with the arm straight like that. And then it's at the midpoint between lung 5, which is around here, and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, which is this bone over here. And then we take the distance between these two points and we find the midpoint, and that is large intestine 11. The other way we can find this is we can ask the patient to flex the arm all the way up here, and then this will emphasize the cubital crease over here, and this point is also known to be found at the end of the cubital crease. And then the indications for this point. So this point can be used for paralysis, numbness, and pain of the hand. It can be also used for motor impairment of the upper extremities and other diseases of the arm. Then secondly, it can be used for febrile diseases, hypertension, and mental disorders. Thirdly, it can be used for abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and other diseases of the stomach and intestines. Fourthly, it can be used for sore throat, toothache, redness with swelling and pain of the eyes, and other febrile diseases of the five sense organs. And finally, it can be used for urticaria, eczema, and scrofula. And then there's a few other important things I want you to note here. Firstly, this is the principal point used to clear excess heat conditions. And you can see this in the indication. That's why you'll see indications such as number two, febrile diseases, over here. Or number four, where it's the sore throat, the redness and swelling and pain of the eyes, or other febrile diseases of the five sense organ. All these point to heat type conditions, and this point is an excellent point used to clear excess heat conditions. Secondly, this is also an important point in treating hemiplegia following a stroke. And then the final point I want you to remember here is this is another one of Mada and Yang's heavenly star points. And he said that this point is especially effective for treating aching elbows Hemiplegia with an inability to close the hand. So just as we mentioned that it's an important point for hemiplegia. And then finally, he said inability to draw a bow. So obviously that's regarding his time.
but this could nowadays be changed to the inability to play a guitar or the inability to draw or write on a piece of paper. All these are similar activities to drawing a bow. And then our insertion is perpendicular, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Jiao Liao, large intestine 12. So this point is located with the elbow flexed in the depression 1 sun superior and lateral to large intestine 11. So once again, we have to locate large intestine 11, and then we've got to go 1 sun superior and 1 sun in this direction, lateral, to large intestine 11. And this puts this point directly above the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So remember, we said that the lateral epicondyle of the humerus is around this region. So we have to be directly above this epicondyle. This point can be used for aching pain, numbness and spasms of the elbow and arm, and other diseases of the local area. So this point's indications are all related to its location. And then the needling for this point is perpendicular, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Sha Wu Li, large intestine 13. So this point is located on the lateral aspect of the upper arm, 3 sun superior to large intestine 11, which on this image is over here. So we've got to be 3 sun above this point, and we've got to be on a line connecting large intestine 11 with large intestine 15. So large intestine 15 is up here, and large intestine 11 is down here. And then large intestine 15, we will discuss how exactly to locate it in a few slides. So what you're going to do is you're going to first locate large intestine 11 and then 15 and then draw a line between the two points in your head. And then large intestine 13 is one third of the distance from the cubital crease to the anterior axillary fold. So you take this distance here and here and we divide it into three equal parts. And this point is on the lower third over here. The indications for this point so they're again local in that they can treat cramping pain in the elbow and arm. And then secondly, it can also be used for scrofula. And then our insertion is a perpendicular insertion or oblique insertion 1 to 1.5 sun. The next point is B now, large intestine 14. So this point is located on the line connecting large intestine 11 to large intestine 15. So once again, like the previous point, we've got to locate We've got to locate large intestine 11 and large intestine 15 and draw a line between the two points. And then this point, large intestine 14, is 7 sun superior, so that's in this direction, to large intestine 11. And it's at the end of the deltoid. So you can see in this image here, this is the deltoid muscle here. And what it's referring to is it's at the end of where the deltoid muscle runs on the arm, which would be around here. And then this point is indicated for cramping pain and paralysis in the shoulder and arm, neck convulsions and other diseases of the arm or shoulder. It can also be used for scrofula and eye diseases. And then our insertion is an oblique superior insertion, 1 to 1.5 sun. The next point is Jian Yu, large intestine 15. So this point is located anterior and inferior to the chromium. So if you look at the image on the right, this image is nice as it shows the chromium. This is this part over here. And then what we've got to do is we've got to go anterior and inferior to it. So anterior in this image would be this direction, as this is the chest over here. And then inferior is referring down towards the feet. So this image, we can't really show that. But we will show this more clearly in the practical sessions. And then what you can do is you can ask the patient to raise their arm and this will highlight two depressions in the shoulder. And this is especially easy to see in thinner patients or in muscular patients. And what will happen is two depressions will form. You can see them over here and here. And then this point is located in the anterior depression. This point is used for paralysis of the hand, motor impairment of the upper extremities, and other diseases of the arm and shoulders. And one thing I want you to note here is this point is particularly useful for treating frozen shoulder and other diseases affecting the shoulder joint. Secondly, it can be also used for urticaria. Our insertion is a perpendicular insertion 0.8 to 1.5 sun with the arm abducted, which means the arm should be in this position here as shown in the image. 
and then we're going to go perpendicular. So we're technically going to go through the depression towards the armpit. The next point is Jugu, large intestine 16. So this point is located on the upper aspect of the shoulder in the depression medial to the acromion process. So once again, here's the acromion over here. And we've got to palpate from the acromion along the back in this direction. And we're looking for a depression just medial to the acromion. And then it will be between the lateral extremity of the clavicle. So that's just referring to the lateral end of the clavicle, which you can kind of see just over here and the upper part of the spine of the scapula. So this is the spine of the scapula, yeah. So this point lies between these two bones in a small depression just medial to the acromion, which is located round about here. This point is used for cramping pain and paralysis in the shoulder and arm and other diseases of the local area. It can also be used for scrofula and goiter. Our insertion is a perpendicular insertion or oblique insertion 0,5 to 1 sin. One note here is that you've got to be careful when doing a deep and medial insertion. So the insertion is going in this direction. As this carries a risk of puncturing the lungs and causing pneumothorax, particularly in thin patients. As if you look in this image here, you can see the rib cage, and that means that the lungs lie in this region here. So if we needle in this direction like this, as you can see, if we go deep enough, if we just follow the line, eventually we're going to reach deep enough that we're going to hit the lung area. And obviously this distance seems quite far on this image, but in thin patients or smaller patients, this distance might be much smaller. And that's why we've got to be extra cautious if we're needling and go much shallower if we're needling in this direction. The next point is Tianding, large intestine 17. So this point is located on the lateral side of the neck which is this region. So it's at the midpoint of large intestine 18, Fu 2, which is up here, and the supraclavicular fossa. So here's the clavicle over here. And we've got to go to the supraclavicular fossa, which is this region here. And then we've got to go from here to here, and we've got to divide it in half. And then where around in this region it lies is that it lies on the posterior margin of the sternocleidomastoid, which we can see the sternocleidomastoid is this muscle. And yeah, the two heads, the one head here is going to the clavicle and the other head over here is going to the sternum. And we've got to be on its posterior margin, which is this region over here. This point can be used locally for sudden loss of voice, sore throat and other diseases of the throat. It can also be used locally for goiter or scrofula. Our insertion is either perpendicular, 0.3 to 0.5 tun, or we can do an oblique insertion 0.5 to 0.8 sin. And the caution here is that we must ensure that we're needling to the correct depth as deeper needling may puncture the carotid artery or the jugular vein. And this is a very dangerous situation. So one must be especially careful if needling these points. The next point is foot 2, large intestine 18. So as we said in the previous slide, this point is needed to find large intestine 17. And this point is located on the lateral side of the neck, so it's in the same region. But this point is level with the tip of the laryngeal prominence, also known commonly as the Adam's apple, which is located over here. So we locate the Adam's apple, and we go lateral to that, which is in this direction. And then we keep going lateral until we come between the two heads of the sternocleidal mastoid. So as I showed you in the previous slide, this is the sternal head over here. And then the clavicular head is over here. And then we want to be in this portion right here, which is between the two heads. The indications, this point can be used for sore throat, sudden loss of voice, and other diseases of the throat. It can also be used for scrofula and goiter. And finally, it can be used for cough and tachypnea. Our insertion is either perpendicular, 0.3 to 0.5 tun, or an oblique insertion, 0.5 to 0.8 tun. And once again, we've got to be extra careful on our needling depths. As if we needle any deeper than recommended, there is a significant risk of puncturing the carotid artery or the jugular vein. The next point is Kohe Liao, large intestine 19. So this point is located on the upper lip and it's 0.5 soon lateral to Du 26. 
So we haven't done do 26, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain now how to locate do 26 as we'll only really cover where this point is located much later on in our much later lecture. So what you're going to do to find do 26 is you're going to take the distance from the tip of the nose over here and the upper lip and you're going to divide it into three equal portions like this. And then do 26 is on the upper third. So that's this line here. And then all you have to do to locate large intestine 19 is you've got to go half a turn lateral to it to do 26 that we've just located. And this is below the lateral aspect of the nostrils. So here's the lateral aspect of the nostril and it's going to be just below that. This point is used mostly for conditions affecting the nose. So it can be used for rhinorrhea, epistaxis, rhinitis, and then it can also be used for deviation of the mouth, locked jaw, and other diseases of the local area. Our insertion is an oblique insertion, 0,3 to 0,5 turn. And then one thing I want to mention here is that when you see these different insertion depths, one thing that can help you remember the depth is to think about all the muscles and tissues that lay below each point. So if you think about this point here, we are needling into the lip and the muscle and tissue in the lip is very thin. So that's why the insertion is much thinner as there's not a lot of muscle and tissue before we will reach the bone. And just like other points that we've done, points on the arm that go into more the bicep region can have a much deeper insertion as there's a lot more tissue to go into before we're going to either hit the bone, the vessels or nerves. So the next point is Yingxiang, large intestine 20. So once again, let's try and locate this point without the picture. So this point is level with the midpoint of the lateral border of the Alanasi in the nasolabial groove. So now I want you to try and think if you know what part of the body is the Alanasi and what part of the body is the nasolabial groove. So this first one gives you your longitudinal measurement and the second one gives you your lateral measurement or your horizontal or transverse measurement. So was this where you were thinking? Firstly, the alanasi is this part of the nose here, also known as the nostril. So we're going to the midpoint of the nostril, which is about here. And then the nasal labial groove is the groove that forms on the cheek over here. And this can be exaggerated by asking a patient to smile, which will then make it clearer to find. So what you do then is you firstly locate the midpoint of the alanasi, which is about here. And then we've got our nasal labial groove here. Connect the two lines, and that's where the point lies. And then I don't know if any of you remember, but we talked a little bit about Yingxian in the introductory lecture slides, as the name of this point gives us our indication of what it's used for. So Yingxian means welcome fragrance. And what this refers to is the ability of this point to treat all conditions that cause a blocked nose, and thus allow the patient to smile once again. And you can see some of these type of conditions in number one, nasal congestion, allergic rhinitis are both conditions of the nose, which may present with a blocked nose, as well as the patient having a loss of smell. And then this point can also be further used for deviation of the mouth and other diseases of the local area. And then finally, it can be used for biliary ascariasis. Our insertion is either oblique or horizontal, 0.3 to 0.5 tun. And if we're doing a horizontal insertion, we're going towards the roots of the nose. So that's the end of the large intestine slides. The next slides we'll be looking at are those of the stomach meridians.